In this video, I'm going to be going over some of the most recent Fallout 76 news. And I'd say in this one, it's probably a little bit more interesting as much of it isn't really from like the official Bethesda sources that you typically check. That doesn't make it not official or not factual, but it's not like they tweeted this out or posted a new article. There are several things I'm going to talk about. I'll have timestamps linked down below if you want to skip around. But either way, just jumping headfirst into this one, we are going to talk about stealth nerfs in Fallout 76. And that's not nerfs to the stealth system, but rather they did nerfs and didn't tell anyone. They weren't included in the patch notes. The first of these came in the form of legendaries, and it was actually starting to get noticed pretty quickly. Following the patch 8 update that added in the Sheep Squatch questline, a lot of people started reporting, hey, are there less legendaries? From there, we saw several threads pop up of people speculating that legendary rates overall around many locations had been nerfed. So people clearing out locations like White Springs Golf Course as well as West Tech reported seeing less legendaries. I wanted to include this as the first example because that's actually 100% false based on the files of Fallout 76. There's nothing reflecting that any of those locations had any change to legendary spawn rates. The one location that actually did see a change was Watoga. So in Fallout 76, in order for an enemy to become a legendary, it has to go through several checks. As an enemy is being spawned, the system will run these checks to make sure it is eligible for for legendary status, such as that it's over level 10, that it's not a player character, that it's not in the forest region, but then the highest level check is just that it has a certain keyword, that being that it can't be a legendary, in game referenced as epic creature disallowed. Well, following what seems like patch 8, several of the enemies you used to encounter in Watoga actually got this keyword. You can see them on the list of all the enemies that do have this. Mostly on that list, you find other robots or notable named NPCs like Phoenix or other traitor bots. But in essence now, pretty much all of the robots that spawn at Watoga can no longer be legendary. Outside of that, one other nerf that was shipped was actually now the Scorch Beast Queen will no longer drop serum recipes. In the past, there was a low percentage chance that you actually could get a a recipe so you can craft the serums yourself, but with the latest update that was removed from the Scorch Beast Queen's leveled list. And now if you actually go to the serum recipes themselves, the only place you can get them is the Enclave Medical Wing Trader. So at the end of the day, neither of these are massive nerfs, I wouldn't really say. The Watoga one was definitely a bit of a larger deal. People did enjoy farming through Watoga, killing through the robots, but even still, it wasn't considered the best farm location. And even further, getting serum recipes off the Scorch Beast Queen was so rare to begin with that now most people won't notice any difference. But the reason this is more concerning is Bethesda never said anything. You could look at this at several different ways. It could have just been an accident. There are two relatively minor changes in the grand scheme of patch 8 when they seem to go live. And I honestly think looking at them in isolation, it's not a huge deal. It's a simple mistake. Bethesda probably just missed this one. And hopefully after being made aware of this one, they could update their patch notes to make it more clear to users that these were potentially intended changes. It definitely seems intended. Unfortunately, though, we don't live in a bubble, and that makes this, I think, far more concerning and just more indicative that Bethesda's patchwork needs swell work. Just a couple of days ago, I made a video on how in the Elder Scrolls Blades, Bethesda omitted several massive nerfs to that game from their patch notes. Those changes ended up basically breaking the end game and making it so there's not much point to play after you beat the story. And even just a few days before that, I made a video talking about how in Fallout 76, Bethesda has issues shipping these patches. Even though a lot of the recent patches contain really awesome content, it also broke several other things around the game, which I'll touch more on later in this video. The fact that Bethesda has now several times accidentally forgot to include nerfs in the patch notes makes it seem like to me this should be an indicator to them that they have to work on how they're shipping these patches. It's not the end of the world, I don't think it's going to destroy the company, but it certainly seems like one of those problems that could be resolved. But speaking of patches and updates, Fallout 76 is also getting an update tomorrow. This is being dubbed Patch 8.5, and something interesting about this one, even though we have several confirmed bug fixes, we don't actually know much about the new content coming. We know that Fallout 76 does have a sheep squatch in the files, there's been many teases to it, and I think it could be plausible that this thing goes live tomorrow. Bethesda has been very mysterious around all of this, so it wouldn't shock me if they don't say anything when they release the Sheep Squatch. Just one day you log in and you might start encountering it. 
So if I was a betting man, tomorrow could be a likely date for that. Otherwise though, looking at some of the new content in tomorrow's patch, we're getting a fix to that bug where you can't actually attach purchased mods to power armor or weapons. They also mentioned how the camera is likely shipping with this patch, but otherwise they give a bunch of details of things getting changed with future patches. This patch is expected to ship on May 9th with the Ever Upwards DLC questline. They mentioned how player bending is likely coming around this time that's been long awaited and actually was delayed. So I'm excited to see that one finally implemented. Also some other things like balance changes to the cost of flamer and cryo ammo. As it stands right now, crafting flamer fuel or cryo cells is, well, really expensive, like ridiculously expensive, but that should be addressed this May. And also, rather than a balance change, actually addressing a rather large bug. Right now in Fallout 76, there's been reports of issues with the Nuka Shine questline just completing without you actually going through and doing it. For a lot of people, this one means they can't experience the quests, but apparently in some other cases, it also means that you can't actually get the crafting tables. Reportedly, a fix for that is also being worked on for this May. They also mentioned some camp changes for this one. With that patch, it'll make it so camps can no longer be destroyed by just a random passerby. They're going to have to engage in PvP combat with you, and you'll have to attack them back, and then they could start destroying your camp. That's only on adventure mode, though. On survival mode, it seems like it'll work exactly the same. As far as those repair kits that we heard about a couple of weeks ago now, they are probably coming in the next week or two. We're right around the time zone of when Bethesda said they were on the way. Maybe it's tomorrow with this update, but we haven't heard anything as far as responses from Bethesda goes, and I'm pretty curious to see what the community reaction is once they finally do get released and how exactly they're implemented. So overall, mostly positive changes, but back to the point I literally made a whole video on, but I just want to mention here, like for example, not being able to attach mods, that was broken in patch 8. That was basically two weeks ago. I really felt like that's one of those things that could have got a hotfix or changed at some point over the two weeks. There are several little bugs like this that have been going on all throughout Fallout 76's update cycle that we just have lingering until the next patch ships out, which feels weird and unnecessary. But hey, regular updates are are definitely welcome, I just hope they manage to sort out some of these other more minor issues that are coming along with them. And hey, who knows, maybe we'll have some special surprises shipping with tomorrow's update. I definitely will have a full video talking about whatever we see. Last but not least, if you guys have been collecting those easter eggs that Bethesda was giving out for their easter egg event, the conclusion to that was seemingly yesterday, the reward being this bunny head that you can now craft at an armor workbench if you got all of the eggs and logged in each day to claim them. Are there something interesting that has has popped up with this, seemingly there are certain users that didn't get some of the early eggs that still are able to craft it. So if you miss like day one or day two, I would check your armor workbench and see if you can make this. I miss some of the days in the middle and I still can't do it, but I am hearing from others that they are able to craft it despite missing certain days. Either way, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this one. We have an update to look forward to tomorrow. If you're wondering or arguing with other people about nerfs coming to this game, now maybe you have a better idea as to whether or not they were legitimate or not. As always, again, I thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I hope to see you all next time. Later.